Hey guys, Jeffrey Leon. Welcome to my YouTube channel dedicated to the advancement of Christian theology, explicating the mark of the beast. May God bless the reading of his holy word. I just want to talk to you guys a little bit real quickly about um, the harlot depicted in Revelation 17, 1 through 6. For it is written... And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and, pre gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the water martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. We know that the, this is the great harlot um, movement and body of believers that actually um, uh, uh, are warring against God. They're no longer um, um, people that... that that can receive of God's presence and of God's love. And so it's a condemned body of, of people that claim to be, um, have the, the, uh, uh, the, um, uh, the righteous, uh, to bear the righteous um, uh, banner of Christ, but actually they've become, their works and their thoughts have, um, and their lusts have turned them away from God um, in per perpetuity. And uh, we know that the people, we know that, uh, oops, wrong page. Um, and uh, in this passage, it depicts specifically that her thoughts have become um, toxic with satanic power. And uh, uh, that's why the, the, the last verse, verse 6, it says, um, um, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs Jesus. And when I saw her, wonder with great admiration. Um, this is not because she's killing saints outright. This is because she's she's killing souls. She's killing souls and people's blood, which represents the life is in the blood, um, um, the life of um, 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 the life of God's uh, 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 Holy Spirit in a in a uh, in a human being. Uh, Her thoughts have become so toxic. She's no longer. She's a. Uh, we know that the passage says that she's she's she blasphemes God. Blasphemes God. She she tells lies against the truth and the power and the glory of God. And she fornicates with the world. And these this is why she's become um, unacceptable to God. And this is this is a it's a, an entire conglomeration. This is the conglomeration of the the goats and the tares. This is the people that received the mark of the beast and the seal of Satan. So um, um, that's why it depicts that she's actually drunk with the blood of the saints. It's because it's not because um, 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 she uh, uh, she's actually killing saints. It's because she's killing souls, right? We know Jeremiah 25, 33 says, um, um, and the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth, one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. Um, uh, they shall not be laminated, laminated, gathered, nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. And that's that's symbolic. The stink of their rotting corpses comes up because their thoughts and their affections and their, the sacrifice of their lives is not acceptable to God. It's no more, it's no more of use to God because they can't receive love anymore. They can't receive His presence anymore. So God calls their, their rotting corpses um, when they're destroyed with the, the spirit of His mouth and the brightness of His coming, as is depicted in 2 Thessalonians 2. Um, they, they, God, you know, they're at war against God, and they, they, they actually, um, um, you know, except those days should be shortened, there should no be flesh should be saved. So she will, I mean, she, given the capacity, she will destroy herself and everybody around her because she's totally consumed by satanic power but God says that that in Matthew 24 that um, um, he's going to shorten the days 
so that because um, Satan would kill everybody, he'd just kill every. He doesn't. I mean, it's like you know, the, they're all serial killers. They've got six, six, six on their foreheads. It's like somebody that walks into Walmart and just has a shooting spree. They're psychotic, satanic killers, and they're they're dead souls. They can't receive the love of God, right? And uh, the only thing that keeps them in line is fear of civil and criminal penalty in their flesh. So, um, the beast. Um, um, that's depicted in Revelation 17, 1 through 6 is, is this is the entire magnitude of satanic power in a human being's life. And uh, uh, Revelation 13, 18 says, um, um, Here is wisdom, let him hath the number, let, let him that hath that understanding count the number of the beast, for there's a number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. And so they, that's how they see, receive their seal. They receive their seal from they're the the children of Satan and they receive his seal because they they can no longer receive the love and the seal of God so um, it's also depicted here in Isaiah 14 12 through 17 um, it says uh, I'm not in Isaiah it says how art thou fallen from heaven, O loose for son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne upon the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend to the above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. We see here the natural manifestation of satanic ascension in, in the heart is actually to control satanically. Um, creation. It's sat It's a natural inclination of people that have crowned Satan in their heart is to control the population satanically. It's satanic administrative control over all flesh. Once a person's crowned by Satan, that's what they want to do. They want to go out and, and subjugate other people satanically. So that's what we see here. We see first Satan ascends in the heart, and then he, he ascends... Uh, uh, and, and a whole body, which is this depicted in Revelation 17, 1 through 6, and then he ascends the very throne room of of the, the very throne, as depicted in Isaiah 47, 1 through, th through 3, of the earth, because he sealed his children. And it's, it's like a vote. They, they, I mean, there's not going to be a vote. They've already voted. He's sealed in the hearts. It's like a, a politician winning a vote without ever even having to to go through the 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 process of of you know he's just it's automatic when he appears there's not going to be a vote he's just going to ascend immediately to the throne once he's sealed in the heart of all his uh, hearts of all his children and it says uh um Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. This is how we know he's definitely coming. He's coming. This is the pit. This is the bottomless pit. There's no I mean there's no amount of we can just keep burying people. There's and we cremate them, you know, and then go out, put them in the field, and grow crops. There's no, you know, there's no amount of the dead. There's no, it's endless, you know. So, um, um, they that see these shall never look, look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms? That made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof? That opened not the house of his prisoners. Um, here we see that that once they're sealed in the heart and a Satan ascends the throne, then God gives them cognizance. They become cognizant and they look at him because they've been looking at him and this this is actually we're commanded not to look at him and this is just this is just a way you know the, the everything comes through the lust of flesh, the lust of eyes, and the pride of life, and it's it's satanic power, you know, and so um, um, they they God gives them cognizance a little bit. Of light just enough left the light to know they're going to look right before after they've been sealed and they're condemned they're going to look at him and they're going to start getting suspicious and wise you know they that see these shall nearly look upon thee and say is this the man they're going to they're going to start wondering is this the person that's brought all this destruction in our lives and into our worlds and and has removed the love of god from our hearts so it's just going to be terrible it's just it's horrible you know what what these people are uh, the people that worship Satan are just ter capable of terrible things. So, but the the transformation of the operational power. We know that Revelation seventeen one through six. This is actually this is it's not just this is specifically it's the transformation of the operational power of God into into servants of Satan sealed by the seed or the crown of the Satan in their hearts. 
And this is why this is why they go they go into to lack of the Revelation seventeen five and upon her forehead was a mystery Babylon the Gate Great and Mother of Harlots and abominations of the earth. You know all that bad all this wickedness here. She's the one. This is what this is what actually um, this is the power that seals everything. It seals the uh, uh, the entire magnitude of satanic power within a human being. You know, but it, God constrains that power because um, if He didn't, then all these people would conglomerate together and they'd kill everybody. There's, there's, you know, with nuclear weapons, everybody here would die. You know, they, they'd kill everybody on the planet. Satan would, if he, had, if Satan had the chance, he would kill everybody. And um, so, but God, but God holds that power back. And so it is written, Revelation 75, upon her forehead was written, written, name written, Mystery Babylon the Great and Mother Hollerts and Abominations of the Earth. Thus she loses cognizance of, of Holy Father God's indwelt presence. And this is also, this is again depicted in Ezekiel 7, 25 through 27. It says, Destruction cometh, and they shall seek peace, and there shall be none. Mischief shall, shall come upon mischief, and rumor shall be upon rumor. Then thou shall they seek a vision of the prophet but the law shall perish from the priest and the council from the ancients they you know um um once you're no longer once you're not you can't receive of god's indwelt presence you can't have there's no uh uh um there's no um transformation of of godly wisdom into your soul there's no um there's no filling of the fullness of godly wisdom and grace there's no there's no um trans there's no transfer of of um, um the glory and grace of god they're just you know they uh uh you can't be filled with godly wisdom you're just filled with 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 um, um the lust of flesh yes the lust of eyes and the pride of life so um and it is written in Romans 7, 12 through 14, Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy, just, and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid sin, that it might appear sin working death in me by that which is good. So all they have working in them is death. They don't have the law is God, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long serving, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such is no law. It's no longer in there. It's no longer in there. For, it's, and there's no longer mercy and grace. We know that that uh, for by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourself. It's a gift of it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So that they, there's no more operational, transforming power of of uh, uh, you know, an all knowing, all loving, and all uh, uh, um, omniscient God. It's just they're just bereft, dead souls. You know, they're just uh, temporal, getting ready to be destroyed. So, uh, John 14, 21, He that hath my commandments loveth me, and he that loveth me shall love to my Father, when I will, and I will come unto him and manifest myself to him. So we know Exodus 21 through 17 is actually the the uh, uh, the constitution of Christianity. And we know the mark of the beast is depicted in Revelation um, 13, 15 through 18. And he had power to give life under the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and would cause that as would not as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So here's this work here again. They actually to force everybody into satanic captivity and into satanic administrative control so they can they can fulfill their own lusts. Here it is here again here. They actually um 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 what was the passion? They, they, if they, if you won't yield to their satanic power, they're going to kill you, and that's part because the law, the commandments of God are not. They, if you break one, you've broken them all, and because, um, um, to try to for and to try to force people into a relationship as God is totally contrary to godly power. Revelation three twenty, and behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, I will open the door and come in to him and sup with him and he with me. You can't force your way in to write laws to try to to try to force people into a relationship with God into a Christian relationship with God is totally foreign to godly power. That's why we have the the United States Constitution, the First Amendment, um, barring the the United States government from writing laws in respect to religion because the, the forefathers knew they just came out of the dark ages and they knew from from what it had taken place with the first incarnation of the beast from 538 to 1798 during the middle ages and the, the time of spiritual intellectual moral 
decay where men did not receive any enlightenment for God, where the beast ruled the, the world and did all the terrible works that she did to the saints, that's just that's just a foretaste of what's coming. That's a that's a facsimile. That's an exact replica of what's coming to modern man. And the Bible describes this as being held captive to Babylon. So, um, and that's depicted that what's coming is depicted in Revelation 13, 11 through 18, and which is actually the crowning of Satan as king in the hearts of all flesh. So, um, this transformation is depicted also um, into to, uh, uh, servants of Satan, Romans 6.16. Know you not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, as servants you are to obey, whether sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. Sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness, that is a dichotomy. So, But it's depicted in Isaiah 8.20-22. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And they shall pass through it hardly bestead and hungry they're not there's no nourishment for their souls they don't god is not talking to them they're they at ezekiel 7 makes it very clear the law of god's not in their heart they don't have the love of god is not in their heart right right he that hath my commandments and keepeth them he does that loveth me and faith for, for by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves it gives of god not of works of any man shall boast so here we have this here again it says that um um they pass through hungry that's and it's it's a spiritual hunger. It's like a famine depicted in Matthew 24, a famine for hearing the word of the God and from understanding and from love flourishing in your heart. So the fruit of the spirit is there, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. And they shall pass through it, hardly bestead and hunger, and it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves and curse their king and their God and look upward. They're not going to know. They're just totally baffled. Spiritually, they don't know what's going on. God has darkened their minds because, I mean, it'd be like, It'd be like, you know, uh, the ship sinking. Total chaos. Every if you you know if a bunch of sinners know that they're gonna die, and what can what? Uh, oh man, it could be terrible. It'd be like a bunch of animals. Put a bunch of wild animals in a cage and have them all attack and rip each other to shreds until God puts that God takes that cognizance from them that that um, they're you know that um, um, they do know he's eventually they know at the very last he's coming to punish them and it's going to be very severe. But while we're passing through it, they're not gonna know. You know, God takes the cognizance from them because it'll be just like a cage of wild animals that just, you know, you put a bunch of uh, um, Tasmanian devils, a male Tasmanian devils in, in, a, in a cage with one female, you know, and it just, you just, you're going to have a bloodbath. So, you know, that's part, I think that's part of the reason that God takes that cognizance from them. And they shall curse their king and their God, but they're tormented and they know it. Eventually they turn, they turn on, you know, they look on him and they say, hey, you know, are you doing? this yeah we think you're the one you're the reason we've crowned you king of the world and now you you know we think you're the antichrist you know so but um and they shall look under the earth behold trouble and darkness dimness of anguish and they shall be driven to darkness this is just symbolic of the fact that that god takes the cognizance of their impending destruction from them until you know i mean they the, if they it just, it just be horrible because they kill everybody satan will kill everybody on the planet if he got a chance um, um there is no nothing more powerful than the truth um, John 14 6 I'm the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the Father but by me uh, manifested with the clarification of experience and that's why Jesus said in John 16 4 but these things have I told unto you that when they when the time come that when the time come, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. Um, so that's that's the Revelation 17, 1 through 6 is the great mother harlot. It's the spiritual, it's the satanic administrative control over all flesh in the world that tries to pull everybody out of a relationship it's actually the it's it's not just the people that have ignored God all their life it's the operational it's the transformation of the operational power of God and people that claim to bear the, the um, um, the righteous standard of a holy God so um, Um, and remember you can come to the throne room of God and receive your healing directly 
for it is written. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not, and not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For these people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Thus at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. If you're edified by this lesson, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to receive notifications of future installments. Thank you so much.